This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwa arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello cave dwellers, welcome to the cave. Today we've got what looks suspiciously like a Super Nintendo gamepad. Of course it isn't, it's something a little bit different to that, in fact all the buttons are glued tight, you can't even press them. And this is a gift from Andrew Armstrong of the back office show. It happened to be the closest thing to hand when he wanted to case some electronics, so he grabbed this and inside it he's put what's called a RetroNet. That device is going to allow us to get this circa 1992 Apple Mac LC3 to connect to the cave Wi-Fi and whatever services beyond that that we can. That's the theory anyway. We're going to take it for a test drive today and see if it's fun to use and of any use to you and get a little bit more familiar with this RetroNet device. I'll start by opening it up and I'll show you what's lurking inside the gamepad here. So the RetroNet's been around for a few years now. I haven't seen much of it on YouTube, but it has been around and it's designed to give us those X25 based packet network experiences of the 80s and 90s so that we can connect to things like BBS boards. The idea then is that the RetroNet connects to the Wi-Fi and the other end of the cable here connects to your retro hardware. In this case, we've got the round serial plug for the Apple LC3 over here, but you could just as easily splice that onto a DB9, DB25 plug, or any other serial connector that you need for your device. Plug it into a Commodore 64, VIC-20, Amiga, Atari ST, you name it, if it's got a serial port, you can just about guarantee that you can connect the RetroNet and get that computer connected up and online. Today though, we're going to use it with the Apple LC3, simply because Andrew's never tried it with an Apple Mac. Uh, he's tried it on many devices, but um, he wanted to put the Apple port on here so we could try it on an LC3 and see if it works just as well as those other devices. So let's fire it up. Hopefully we'll get the Mac chime. There it is, still working. As with other Macs of the day, it did have built-in networking on the serial port itself using Apple's local talk, or you could add an ethernet adapter to the single PDS slot inside the machine. So I did have other options with this machine to get connected, but like I said, Andrew's never tested it on a Mac, so that's what we've got to play with today. And while that's booting up, let's take a look at some of the highlights of Andrew putting the device together before he sent it to me, so we can get a better look at how it works. And here is the good doctor at work. You can see he's dremeling out a micro USB port on that gamepad shell, and that will simply be used to power the device, the USB cable, plugging into a mains plug adapter for power alone. And then he's wiring up the Apple serial port connector with his slick soldering skills. And that whole build process is on Andrew's channel. If you want to see him putting it together, the link is in the description. And he goes into a lot of detail while he's building it. At the other end of the cable are just three wires soldered to get this talking to your machine. And that's the RX cable for receiving data, TX for transmitting data and the ground. So it shouldn't take long at all to get this wired up if you buy yourself a board. And not only did Andrew put that USB port in for power, he's also added a battery. So you could in theory take this down to your local coffee shop with your old school portable laptop and use it completely without mains power to get yourself online for that ultimate hipster coffee shop look, I guess. Maybe take a Commodore SX64 down there or something. Anyway, that's it. Like I said, Andrew has a 40 minute plus video on the inner workings of this on his channel. So if you want to see that in more detail, then do check it out. But today I want to concentrate on demonstrating it on the Mac over here. So I'm going to screw it all back together quickly, plug it in and we'll see what we can connect to. I've plugged the RetroNet into that serial port then and we need to be able to talk to it. And to do that, I'm using Z-Term or Z-Term to our American friends. This is a typical terminal utility and you'll need the equivalent tool on whatever system you're using to be able to talk to the RetroNet. So the tool you use may be different, but the commands I'm using will be exactly the same regardless of the system. I'll then plug the power into the RetroNet and after a period of random symbols flashing away on the screen, we get the ready message. And it shows that it's connected to my Wi-Fi and it's picked up an IP address from the DHCP server because, of course, I've already been testing it before making this video. But I will take you through the steps on how we connect. 
Now any old modem users will of course remember bashing those AT commands into a terminal and that's what our commands start with here. AT plus CWLAP tells the Retronet to scan and return the available wireless networks it can detect. Mine's picking up three here including my own RMC network. To connect we type AT plus CWJAP equals and then the SSID of the wireless network followed by the password which of course I'm not going to reveal here. But that's all there is to it to get yourself connected assuming you're happy with the DHCP assigned IP address and you don't have any static IP needs. So I'll skip that line which is why you see the error because I'm already connected and I can confirm that by typing AT plus CWJAP question mark and there you can see we're connected to RMC. So it's quite straightforward as long as you have the list of commands to hand and I'll include a link in the description to help you out with that. Now I want to put this to the test by connecting to a BBS board so to speed things up a little bit I've stored the commands as macros instead of typing them in one at a time but you'll still see them on the screen. The first command is AT plus SIPMUX equals zero. This puts us in single IP connection mode as opposed to multi IP. And then next we'll set SIP mode to one. And this sets the TCP IP application mode to transparent mode. With that, we're ready to connect to a BBS board. And I've chosen the board from Retro Battle Stations over on Reddit, a subreddit you should definitely check out to see some great retro kit from other enthusiasts if you're not already subscribed. And now we're connected to the BBS. How cool is that? I'm using my 1992 Apple Mac over Wi-Fi to use a BBS board. We've got one more command to run though, and that's AT plus SIP send. This tells the Retronet to stop accepting commands and pass my key presses through to the BBS board. So once we've given it that command, we can go ahead and use the BBS in earnest. This is the first time I've connected to this board. So let's just fast forward through the registration process to get myself a username. And there we are at the main screen of the BBS. We've got options to play games, read or post messages and run external services. As BBSs go, this is pretty simple and that's because it's designed to cater for the many weird and wonderful systems the Retro Battle Station's user base own. I suppose the polite thing to do is leave my own message. So here goes. And I'm not the only one posting here, it's quite active. We've got Laser Dragon, who says he's connected with an Amiga 2000 using a serial to USB connection and a Raspberry Pi. And there's also Cloud Scout, who's representing the Atari crowd with his 1040 STF running Taz. Poking around on the BBS, they've also got external services set up, including a Twitter service. So I followed the instructions and linked my account before having a go at posting a tweet. And there it is on Twitter, posted from my LC3 over Wi-Fi, and that certainly gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling to see. During testing, I didn't suffer any lost connections or unexpected problems. It just worked, as Apple would say, and it worked quite happily. My tic-tac-toe game here ending in a draw, and as anyone who's seen war games knows, I've just averted thermonuclear war. You're welcome. And of course, there's the mandatory test for any Telnet session, ASCII Star Wars streaming. Those are just some of the things I did to test this out and see it in action. I thought it was a lot of fun and it worked well. But what are the practical applications for it? On an older machine, you'll probably be very happy to be able to connect to those BBS boards, exchange messages and maybe files with people. My BBS days took place from the Amiga onwards, so connecting up a VIC-20 for example and seeing a BBS appear on a CRT television over Wi-Fi is very cool indeed. On a 90s machine, you might want a little more out of it. Perhaps you're even thinking of some rudimentary web browsing and that's possible, but not with the RetroNet alone. You'd need to set up a slip server, perhaps using a Raspberry Pi, and configure the machine to work through that. So that's certainly an option with a bit of configuration. I also set my own local BBS up and experimented with using it to transfer files onto the machine. Previously, I'd been burning CDs and using an external CD-ROM drive for the task. And, well, yes, it worked, but in all honesty, it was just as quick to burn a CD as it was to transfer over the BBS. And in many cases, you'll have a compact flash or SD card solution in place in your retro hardware, which will have already taken the pain out of file transfers. So the RetroNet then is good fun to play with and it's something I think I'll be using a lot more, especially with the 8-bit machines. But we have proven for Andrew here today that yes, it does even work on an Apple Macintosh and I hope that helps you, Andrew. 
Do take a moment to check the links in the description to find the Retronet, the back office show and anything else mentioned in this video. And as always, thank you for watching, take care and look out for me lurking in the message boards of BVSs from now on. Bye for now. Thank you.